We'll now look briefly at the only other two serious candidates for a thesis that Jesus' body was stolen from the tomb. One is arcane, while the other is pretty common sense, as far as that goes. The Archean thesis refers to the work of the church father Tertullian, where he mentions that some people say the gardener stole the body of Jesus from the tomb. This was written some 175 years after the Gospels, and though it may reflect the anti-resurrection polemic in Tertullian's time, it tells us nothing about such polemic in the first century. Some people may say that in John's Gospel, Mary assumes that Jesus is the gardener and asks him where the body went and so this shows that she thought the gardener would be likely to move the body. But in fact it says no more than that the gardener as an employee of the garden would have some knowledge of the affair, and it also reflects rather the desperate and emotional query of a grief-stricken person who isn't offering something that can be viably turned into a sound argument. It's up to the critic to explain why it is plausible or acceptable to hypothesize that a gardener took Jesus' body, and then fit it in with all the other evidence. The rationalization used in Tertullian's time is that the body was moved by the gardener because he didn't want curious crowds trampling on his lettuces, a scenario that hardly commends itself as plausible or practical, if for no other reason than that the devout Jews would hardly plant crops for consumption in such close proximity to a gravesite. And so we turn to the original anti-apologetic, which charges the disciples with the theft of Jesus' body. The answer to this charge in modern times has generally appealed to the improbability of the disciples allowing themselves to suffer or even die for the sake of a lie. This argument is generally sound, save that it frequently overstates the occurrence of martyrdom. Emphasis should rather be on the extensive social persecution that the disciples would have had to endure, as we emphasized earlier in this series. In addition, it's common to state that for the disciples as persons of Jewish heritage, the stakes were even higher than that, as articulated by Paul. Other problems plagued the theft thesis. How many disciples were in on it, and which ones? Critics are faced with a certain conundrum. They may try to minimize the number of disciples involved, but reducing the number means fewer people to ensure that the conspiracy will work in practice. Manpower would be needed to pull such an event off. How much? We'll turn to that in our next segment because the data we'll present applies to any party nominated as a candidate to steal the body of Jesus, not just his disciples. See you then.